This is LAFC in 30. I am Max Bredos. Welcome to episode two of the 2019 season, where we look back at the home game here at Bank of California Stadium against new boys, the expansion team FC Cincinnati. Where can I start? Well, how about this? LAFC away two weekends. Where are they? Go to San Jose, demolish the earthquakes five zip, hat trick from Carlos Vela. Then they go to the nation's capital, demolish DC United four zip, hat trick by Diego Rossi. Everything is hitting their marks. Best offense in the league. Defensively, hadn't allowed a goal in 235 minutes. And now you have two bona fide MVP candidates in Vela and Rossi. The opponent, FC Cincinnati, would certainly provide a stiff test, exceeding expectations in their first season, looking to follow the blueprint of previous recent expansion teams. And maybe there was some hope as LAFC somewhat shorthanded. Injuries keeping Lee Wynn, Adama Diamande and Andre Horta out of the 18. But as we know, LAFC loaded in so many other positions and the fans here after two weeks where they were irresistible, ready to welcome the guys in black and gold back in a big way here. Let's show you what happened. Another memorable night. The offense and defense as well chiming in. My plus one, Ian Joy. It's FC Cincinnati able to get a couple touches in their attacking and Alan Cruz for a moment. Nice time. Breaking forward, Vela Rossi! Another block at the doorstep. Cleared away, lost it. I mean, it's just terrific to watch. The movement off the ball from Rossi is, in particular, so in style. Great pace, great determination, and they're in sync, Carlos Vela and Diego Rossi. Terrific partnership really forming there, as we talked about in the pregame. That should have been another goal. Great opportunity. As we take another look, again, LAFC coming with conviction, Ian. Vela and Rossi, they're, they're feeding each other. You know, I think it's to be expected when you're playing in front of this wonderful Coliseum. I mean, this is just terrific. The supporters expect now, Max. This is season two. They're top of the table, flying high. Every single player has got to be on point. You're fighting for a place in the starting 11. But chances like that are so difficult to come by. With this team, it doesn't seem so. No, if they don't get the first one, they'll keep going. If the left one doesn't get you, the right one will. There has been a blueprint nice. to find some success here against LAFC. And Real Salt Lake, who came in shorthanded, giving away the Walker Zimmerman goal late as Blessing curls around, will get a free kick. Mathieu Deplan bringing him down. Set piece opportunity for LAFC. This is wonderful ability from Latif Blessing. Not only to win possession of the ball from Deplan, but to also get him behind him. The defender's got no other option but to commit that foul. It's a dangerous position, but I'd rather give away a free kick in that position than allow Blessing to go inside the box and pick his target. It feels like if it's not when, it's, it's not if, it's when for LAFC with regards to scoring a goal. Great opportunity just on the outside of the 18, nine minutes in, Vela. Well, he tried to call his own number. Can't fault him for that. Oh, you called it. I think in that position, I would expect Vela to put it into the danger zone. There's a lot of big bodies forward. You've already missed two golden opportunities. I think the better chance right there was to put it into that danger zone. Allow one of the bigger players, Segura or Zimmerman, to try and attack it. Disappointing there from Carlos Vela. Kind of earned his spot. Didn't kind of definitely earned his spot here as a scout, uh, an assistant. Now the head man here for a team with a lot of promise and a lot of support. Vela surrounded, he'll get the free kick. He was campaigning for one, finally got the whistle. I think he was waiting for the referee to blow his whistle. Bertone put a lot of pressure on him. Quickly taken, Beta Shore, it was for Ramirez, just behind him. Blessing and Beta Shore slam into each other, trying to head it back in. 
Wow, what a chance. Can Guilt Edge looks here for LAFC? Yeah, this is a big chance. I mean, Stephen Bateshaw makes an excellent wrong. He just gets the header wrong. Look at the run from Ramirez. That's what you want your striker to do. In that type of position, he expects to be served. Disappointed from Bateshaw right there. Good chance. You can see the reaction from Ramirez. He's, he put himself in the right position. Now flying up the left side. Mane, look out here, safe. Right there for Maddox, it skims the crossbar, but Whoa. nothing more. What a chance that was for Cincinnati. Pulsating pace again, and players flying in. Stage left, stage right. Legs get tangled, this will favor Cincinnati. That doesn't look too good. On Kenny safe. Here's the chance. Wonderful build up. Safe picks up his head and he's picked out Mattox at the back post. It will be Leonardo Bertone. Not a bad ball for Waston, who was, well, someone was offside. Not sure if it was Waston, but regardless, it's an offside call against FC Cincinnati. You see what I mean right there, Max? That type of delivery is so difficult for Tyler Miller to come out and claim. That type of delivery just entices him to make that decision. Do I stay or do I go? He decided to stay, and he was a little fortunate there that the offside flag went up and Waston and Waston missed that cross because it was a good chance. It was Waston. You can see he had a, a healthy head start. Safe back on the field for Maddox. Maddox getting a chance to feature here for FC Cincinnati. He goes down, play on, says Drew Fisher. Blessing. Vela, that's his spot if he can turn. Through the legs. A nutmeg, if you will. Kay Ramirez. Beautiful football. Again from LAFC. Yeah, tough chance, though, for Christian Ramirez to get this one under control because it's fired into him for Mark Anthony Kay. Here's the earlier challenge from Zimmerman. He does everything right. Stands up. He's a little patient. I don't think there's a foul there. I'm OK with that challenge. Was headed out by Haglin. A twister with plenty of time and space. Banks it in. Oh, Mark Anthony K was wide open. He hit it with haste. He had more time than he thought. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I don't think that K realized how much time he actually had with this opportunity. It's a good cross. I don't think it's the cross that Atuesta wanted, but it fell perfectly right there to Mark Anthony K. And he got his strike horribly wrong. This is very difficult technique to pull off. It's bouncing. To be able to pull it off in the half ball is a tough one. Well, actually, you know what? You might, because actually LA could use a little rain. I know I could. Uh, the, the, the small yard in the front's getting a little brown. As we reach the half hour mark. Oh, nice. No score. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> he's going to get a yellow card. Waston doing his best to say it was an accident. The accident or not, Rossi's down, the elbow was up. Yeah, he certainly catches him in the face here as well, though, Mike's. I mean, this is a high arm. I don't think it's on purpose. I think it's just unfortunate. I mean, he's a much bigger boy. You can clearly see that Rossi felt the brunt end of that elbow right on the nose. But there is Jimmy, along with LAFC Sal, firing up the 32-52. Have you learned some of the songs, Ian? I wish I learned some of the songs. I drink too many beers when I come here as a supporter. Well, we have cards here with some of the lyrics if you want to sing along in a little bit. See if I can help you. Deep free kick. It's Rossi and Vela. Atuesta. Ooh, Vela, what a touch! Second, third! Penalty, no. No! Ucha Magooch Su Su Studio. Well, I can tell you that Carlos Vela is looking for this penalty kick. He certainly goes down easily. There is contact there, no doubt about it. How about this silky first touch? The second one he couldn't get under control. But look at the contact right there. Matux is the one who makes initial contact. And it might just be enough. He doesn't get enough contact on the ball for my liking. It's a close one, but Carlos Vela is certainly looking for it. By the way, my, my good friend Hercules Gomez, who's on our podcast, did have an article saying that Carlos Vela has been in cruise control. I talked to him about it. He said he's been getting a lot of heat, but he's sticking by it. If that's cruise control, 
That is a Ferrari on the Autobahn cruise control as he went from point A to point B as the crow flies mighty quick. No penalty will be a corner kick corner kick number four for LAFC. Set piece productivity something LAFC would like to get better at because they get so many opportunities. Vela over the head of Harvey. They've converted. Mark Anthony K. Return of the back for his second goal. And they knocked on the door. And they finally kicked it through. 32nd minute. 1 0 LAFC. Well, Bob Bradley is not celebrating right now, but he should be because this goal is special. What a delivery that is from Carlos Vela. And an even better header by Mark Anthony K. He's going away from goal, and to make that type of contact on the ball, spin it into the box. <laughs> it's something very, very special. What a technique, what a goal. How about the celebration? Cool as you like. Second goal of the season to go with two assists. We talked about him. He said, I, I, you get that goal tally up and you're an all-round midfielder. You're going to be a featured player for a long time. Irresistible, folks. Oh, that's going to probably be trouble for Zimmerman as he drags down Kenny Safe. He's upset with either the official or Atuesta. No, he's at, at the official. Hot. I'm not sure what he's angry about. Maybe we'll get some details on it here as he becomes the first LAFC player booked. Well, it's certainly a yellow card. I mean, he loses the battle, but I think he's what he's complaining uh, about yes. is the early contact. You know, and you can't do that. If you're a defender and you feel that early contact, naturally it knocks you off balance. The referee should have given a free kick, unfortunately, for Walker Zimmerman. From the two very talented defensive midfielders of DC, left him in his wake. Just shows you about the effort and the world-class speed possessed by Rossi. Tyler Miller in trouble. We did show you the next home game here in on April the 21st, so eight days' time. There is a road game at Vancouver on Wednesday. You can catch that on YouTube TV. What a chance this is, Max. This, we've been seeing this a lot from goalies. We Just goalies making the, maybe the wrong decision. Tyler Miller lucky. Nothing came of it. Well, you can see that Tyler Miller's caught in two minds. He wasn't quite sure whether to go on to the outside or the inside, made the wrong decision. Mark Anthony K, very deceptive pace as he separates. Latif Favela. Uh-oh. A little push there by Deplan on Vela and Mark Anthony K there to police it. Make sure you stay tuned for our halftime show. show. Get it down to Mark with contributions from Jarena. Hope to hear from Bob Bradley. Get all our reactions on our first half of play as this remains a situation. This is nonsense. Absolute nonsense from Matteo Duplan. I've been in that position playing against talented players, but this is a complete loss of control. Look, he makes the challenge. I think he's complaining about the hand in the face, but get up and get on with it. He stands over the top of Carlos Vela, trying to entice him. And of course, naturally, Carlos Vela will react when you get a little kick here and there. These matches have got huge importance, Max. Yeah, the hand of the plan did come down on Vela on the way out. I think Bob Bradley will be a little disappointed with his team in the first 45 minutes, Max. I think that halftime team talk yeah. will be a little electric in that locker room because he knows his team can do so much better. They've made a few mistakes. They haven't taken their chances when they should have done. It can be so much better, but yet they're still leading against FC Cincinnati. Here they go again. Goal here would be Golden. Vela. Oh, it's banged off a of Hoyt as he was going for goal. Unable to keep it in to Deplan. Zero minute is in this blind spot. Watch out. It's played by Maddox. Safe onside. Maddox fires and a big save by Tyler Miller. That was on its way in. Wow, what a save. 
little messy in the back, but in the end, no harm done. I thought initially Kenny Safe was actually in an offside position when the ball was played forward. Right there, that touch right there, I thought Safe was maybe fractionally ahead. The linesman didn't think so. He played it on, and this was a wonderful save from Miller. This is what he can do. Produce magic like that. It's a wonderful save. And the chance of Tyler Miller. They love him in the north end. There's one last go, but there's the halftime whistle as Latif Blessing saw a lot of green grass in front of him, but he'll have to save his runs for half number two. The man of the moment is the Mac. Mark Anthony K. His goal, the difference at the end of 45 minutes. Much more to come. Half number two, LAFC looking for win number six in seven. Busy week coming at ahead with the midweek game at Vancouver, then back here against Seattle, then at Seattle the following week. Vela gets open, gets it here, separates. Vela, beta shore for Ramirez Vela, right into the hands of Spencer Ritchie. That was right on a platter for Vela down Rossi a little late reacting can't find it but he gets a lucky bounce it comes from Mark Anthony Kane flies out for Vela Vela's touch off the chest is a good one Vela one on one that's his spot and Cincinnati took it away but he wants it back Rossi Vela chip oh almost that just kept living and surviving that chance. Well, they're in the hunt. This is sloppy defending from Cincinnati. Everybody's played on side by Justin Hoyt at the far post, and then when the cross comes in from Rossi, it falls kindly to Vela, but he's going away from goal. It's always going to be difficult when you try the cheeky chip from there. Almost. There's a little haggling handball protest. Certainly questionable when you go to ground and your arm is outstretched like that. It stops the run of play from the ball. A twister. Vela. Rossi, sightline. Rossi! It's into the net, but the back of the net. Hit it firm. Well, certainly another good chance. And I go back to it, decision making. Is there a better option for Rossi? He doesn't lift his head up to see what's around him. Blessing makes a great run forward, so does Carlos Vela. Maybe the better option was to go for goal, and I think Rossi will be disappointed with that effort. Not a bad look, but he probably thinks he could have hit it a little better. Maddox, safe is his option. Safe is his target. Safe gets it, but he hits it wide. That was onside. Great chance for Cincinnati to pull level as we hit the hour mark. Well, he expected a fraction earlier here. Kenny Safe, he makes an excellent run forward. And this is beautiful from FC Cincinnati. Lovely cross from Maddox. Good defender from Jordan Harvey. He does just enough against Safe to make sure he puts him slightly off balance. That is a big, big chance for the away side, and they should have done better. Rossi, one-on-one, -on -one. pins the ears back. Vela, onside, Perez! Oh, could it have been? What a magical moment, that close from a tight, acute angle. What a chance. A big moment for the youngster. Again, creativity-wise, this is inch perfect. Rossi to Vela. Vela recognizes the shot's not on, passes it off. And that's a moment he will want back again. Perez should do so much better there. Doesn't look too good for Zimmerman. As they tend to Zimmerman, just one thing about the jump for LA Football Club, and it's something the club has tried to push for this to become a thing throughout the stadium. And you're seeing groups throughout participating. And the goal is for the whole place to do it. It's going to happen one day. We'll get well, You can see the supporters are really getting into it around the stadium. What an atmosphere. I mean, this is just incredible. This is what Los Angeles is. People are here to have a good time, to be entertained. The product is not disappointed on the field. Something special is brewing here. It is, and it gets stronger, and it grows, and we saw that. The San Jose experience was the eye-opener.
the droves of LAFC fans making it up to Northern California. Meanwhile, Zimmerman is up and looks like he's walking off and it's going to open up an opportunity for Danilo Silva. Hopefully, precaution will get some more details about his condition here. Depth was a big priority for LAFC over the last few months, and this is why Danilo Silva, a guy who could start for LAFC, could start for many teams in Major League Soccer, coming off the bench, but for reasons like this. We certainly hope that there isn't anything too seriously wrong here with Walker Zimmerman. He's walking off in a little bit of discomfort, having a quick word with Bob Bradley right there, but Danilo gets his chance. Safe, been quiet the last few minutes. Nice curl around Harvey. Help from Perez. This is promising. Atuesta. Vela. Here's Rossi. Flying forward. Vela keeps it. Vela! Carlitos! Heavy duty! LAFC will score two goals again. And they will score in stoppage time in the second half. Certainly has not been his night, Carlos Vela, but it's not been for the lack of trying. He has gone on and on for his team to try and find that second goal. This was a tired finish, but my oh my, doesn't he make it look easy? 1v1 against Boston, right foot, and he just sneaks it over the goal line. That's the skill, that's the creativity that we talked about in the pregame, put into practice, and there's number two. And another three points are staying at the bank. Carlos Vela went to the biggest, baddest guy in the bar, and he said, bring it. Muscled up against Kendall Waston and scored. Timing everything. 21 goals on the season, eight goals for Carlos Vela. Atuesta. Time to jump. Harvey. That one had some venom. It's going to be collected by Richie. That might be it. It is. LAFC win again. And they win by two. It just, the good times keep rolling here. There's good spirits, and that will continue at least until Wednesday night when they face Vancouver up in Canada. I think it's one of those performances where you know you can do better on all areas of the <laughs> yeah. field, but you're so happy to get in that locker room with the three points, celebrate it with the boys, and I think Bob Bradley will also recognize that. You can't always score five and six goals but it wasn't for the lack of trying. The team tried, they eventually got the second goal, and they deserve the three points at the end of the day, but full credit to Cincinnati. They came to try and play, and they caused a few problems. 11 goals in the last three games, 325 minutes without conceding a goal, and they've outscored opponents 13 to zip over that stretch, so clicking on both ends, and they remain on the top. You know, the coaching staff, they do a good job of analyzing how the other, our opposition defend corners. So I think that, um, you know, we knew that there was a good area to get the ball in. And if we had the right amount of guys in that spot, it didn't really matter. There wasn't anyone it was meant for. It was just to be in a good spot and knowing that guys were going to be there and someone's going to get on the end of it. So <clears throat> we work on it a lot in training. Um, and, you know, it's nice when it pays off. Good flick by Jordan on that. Yeah, one. yeah. So <laughs> it's weird. It was weird how when it happened so quickly. But yeah, Carlos again puts in a very, very good ball. Jordan gets a flick on it, and somehow he just puts it in my, you know, direction, and it actually takes the weight off the ball and makes my job a lot easier. So now people think that I'm a threat in the air, but we'll see if I can get a third one, and then we'll talk. But uh, yeah, no, it's been good so far. Yeah, tonight I don't think we were as sharp as I'd like. Uh, 
you know, the, the kind of football that we want to play in terms of the quality of every pass, the timing, finding the right spaces. Uh, some of those things still went up and down. So uh, makes for a hard game. Uh, they worked very hard, put a lot into it. Uh, the good news is still that uh, we get a shutout and that uh, in terms of just the mentality of the group on a night when maybe the football isn't the best, I think that that part was positive. Uh, and, and, you know, you remind them that that's uh, – when, when you've had these – uh, last two games, which end up as as feel good games, where you've got leads and now guys are getting goals and everybody's excited, that they're still the part. Uh, especially when we come home to Bank of California, that teams come in with game plans. Uh, we saw it a lot last year. They tried to uh, be physical and disrupt the game as best they can uh, early in the in the game. Uh, I think they went very tight to Edward Atuesta and Mark Anthony Kay to try to stop some of our buildups uh, when we were smart at finding spaces when um, they moved uh, and, and opened up some spaces and Jordan came into certain pockets or Latif was able to find the next ball. Then we were much more fluid. But some of those things, like I said, went up and down on the night. So good win. Uh, still a lot to work on. I'm a DP player. They buy me for for do this this couple of things. So I get that responsibility in my team. I'm trying to do my best to produce the most things possible every game. And I'm trying to be a good leader, a good teammate. So I'm trying to do all in the right moment, in the right situation. So. I'm pushing myself. I'm trying to be the best Carlos Bella as possible, and I think I'm doing well. So I I start to I start really well the season, but it's it's long. So I have to keep uh, working. I have to every game show something for my team, and I hope we can do a, a great season. Carlos. The end of games, how different is it this season through seven weeks compared to what you guys were experiencing last year, your mentality, the results, and finishing teams? Well, you know, in the end, every project needs time. And last year we was, was all new. Some moment can, we can respond like, like we're supposed to do. And this year we know each other. I know and they know how play every every player so it's more much easier to to finish the game in better ways so I think the the chemistry is great and we are trying to be the best team in the league so we have to win every game or try to play good and try to win every game Carlos uh, you got eight goals in seven games is this the best you've ever felt in your career well I feel really well I feel good in in the way I'm playing and the way I'm scoring goals, but the most important is the team. The most important is help my team, uh, help my teammates. So I'm working hard uh, to do that. So I'm happy, but still I want to do more. So I'm trying to work really hard every game, trying to do different things, new things every game. So I hope I can be in, in this line. But don't forget Wednesday, join us with our coverage beginning at 5.30. We've got all sorts of pregame coverage leading up to the pregame show, which begins at 6.30 and then just after 7 p.m. As Max said during our game broadcast tonight, it's Gary Bailey, former Manchester United keeper, who will join <laughs> us. And uh, hey, great job again, Ian. It's going to be tough. Whoever hey. wants to go third time around, it's going to be really tough for them to live up to the, the standard. Thank you so much for having me, guys. On behalf of Max Bredo, Serena Catalina, Enjoy the rest of our YouTube TV crew, Bernard Worrell, running all the switches back behind the scenes. We couldn't do it without him. I am Mark Rogandino. Win number thanks, six, thanks, LAFC, 2 nothing winners against FC Cincinnati. We'll see you on Wednesday right back here on YouTube TV.